Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School, the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. Your faith does need to be fed, and not just man's ideas and thinking, but the anointed Word of God. And when we feed on that, it nourishes up our faith. And our eyes are enlightened and we come up higher. And what uh, previously seemed unreachable, impossible, uh, seems doable because it is possible. So let's pray, get your Bible, get something to make a note with and come into the classroom with us. Let's pray and release our faith for utterance and light today. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the privilege of being able to commune and fellowship with you and each other, with your Holy Spirit. He is the greatest teacher there will ever be. Uh, illuminate our hearts and minds. Give us answers. Lead us into more. Show us how to be doers of what you've already shown us. And uh, thank you for revealing things that protect us and keep us and help us and bring us up higher. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look with me in our, our text in Hebrews 10 again. Hebrews 10, 35 through chapter 11 is talking about what we've been studying on our series called By Faith. We see 10, 35 says, Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Verse 38 says, the just will live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul, I have no pleasure in him. But we're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Then he mentions verse by verse what faith is and gives us living examples of people who lived and fought and received and were revived and made strong and overcame by faith. And we've gotten all the way down to verse 32 in our study where we're given not just one name but six names of different individuals who had faith, uh, you, you could say remarkable faith, faith worth remarking about and studying. And in this group is Samson, Samson. And we've been studying to see what we, we know from reading the Word, he was a a man who did powerful physical exploits, a man that God used to deliver his people out of uh, the power of their enemies and give them great victories in battle. But he's not in Hebrews 11 just for that. He's in Hebrews 11 for his faith. So where do we see his faith? We saw it, if you'll turn back again to chapter of Judges chapter 14, we saw it in his faith in the power of God. You know, Paul said, we read this earlier in the New Testament, he said, I, I don't want your faith to just be in the wisdom of men. I want your faith to be in the power of God. And I mean, that's, that touches all kind of things. First of all, uh, if you believe that God created the heavens and the earth, you believe in the power of God. It took the power of God to do that. If you believe that God created human beings, you believe in the power of God. If you believe that he created uh, uh, Jesus and that uh, by virgin birth and that he was raised from the dead physically, you believe in the power of God. If you say, I, that's all fantasy and myth. I don't believe in all that stuff. Well, then you don't believe in God. You, you are an unbeliever, and sadly, you are lost. And, and you, you need to get that changed before you leave this life. This is the most serious thing we could ever possibly talk about. It's a choice. If people say, well, 
I'm sorry, you know, I'm an educated person. I'm intelligent. Well, if you say so. <laughs> I'm intelligent. Um, I, don't, I can't believe in all this fantasy, mythology, miracle stuff. You're wrong about that. You could believe it if you would choose to. By very nature of what belief and faith is, it's not based on analysis. It's not based on research. It's not based on statistics or facts. It's a choice. By, by nature of what faith is, it's a choice. And it's trust. You, you, you do it all the time with other human beings. If somebody tells you something that you, you don't have a way of knowing whether it's true or not, well, you just have to make a decision whether you tr believe them or not based on your knowledge of their person and their nature and your previous experience with them. So don't say you can't believe a thing. That's an untrue statement. Uh, more accurate would be to say, I choose not to believe it. I choose not to trust it. And old friend, when it comes to God, be smart. Choose to trust <laughs> the creator of the heavens and the earth. True, choose to trust the God who loved you enough to send his son and pay the price for your redemption. Somebody say, I choose to believe. I'm, I'm a believer. I choose to believe. Well, uh, Samson had faith in the power of God. But now, that wasn't enough to prevent his fall and failure. Think about that. I mean, when it comes to somebody that had faith that when you would step out to do something for God, that the anointing would come on you in ways nobody had ever heard about or seen before, that's Samson. He had the faith. Do you remember one night he was, you read about it here in the text, he, he was in this town and the Philistines heard he was there and they surrounded the place. It was a walled city. They surrounded it, and the plan was in the morning when they open the gates and he comes out, they're going to get him. Well, about midnight, he gets up and he goes to leave. Well, in those days, uh, the, the walls were massive. It was your only protection from the enemy. Big, giant uh, timbers, big, huge beams, and even they developed some metal and, and things to reinforce it. Well, you couldn't leave until the guards and the soldiers came out and, and they unlocked the gates and opened them and it usually took a lot of people or animals or all kind of stuff. Well, he gets to the, the, the gates and grabs hold of them and pulls them, the posts out of the ground and tears the hinges off the wall and puts it on his back and carries it up the hill. And I guess all the soldiers surrounding the thing were so startled and scared that they just watched him. Because, <laughs> you know, think about it. Somebody can do that. Do you really want to be the first one to, ta to tangle with them? So faith in the power of God, Samson had it. But we know from studying the beginning of this account that this was attached and connected to his separation. What did uh, the angel tell his mother and, and repeat to them even? That he was a Nazarite. He was separated to God from his birth to his death. And that was indicated by his not eating unclean things, his not drinking alcohol and getting drunk, and, and he never cut his hair. These were indications of that. Well, we see right off the bat a problem with that. In the uh, uh, 14th chapter, Judges 14, 1, Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman. <laughs> he saw a woman. Now, the, you know if you've read the story why I'm pausing on that because this wasn't the last time. And this happened repeatedly, and eventually it resulted in his losing his anointing and his place. He saw a woman 
in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and mother, what did he say? I have seen a woman. I have seen a woman in Timnath. Now therefore get her for me to wife. And his father and mother said to him, and rightly so, they said, is there never a woman among the daughters of your brethren, talking about his nation and Israelites, among all the people, that you go to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Uh, they were expressly forbidden by God to intermarry with uh, idol worshipers. This had nothing to do with people from different tribes or that kind of thing. It was the ungodly. It was people that didn't believe in God, didn't accept the Ten Commandments or His prophets. They worshipped a fish god called Dagon. And the Lord had commanded them, you do not intermarry with idolaters and false God worshipers. That should have been the end of the story. Right? If you're going to obey God, if you're going to listen to Him. I mean, even today, aren't we told, don't be unequally yoked together. And it's got nothing to do with your background or, you know, part of the world or any of that. It has to do with unbelievers unbelievers. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's New Testament. Uh, but it wasn't the end. He said, no, I've seen a woman and I want her. And even though it wasn't the will of God, you know, God used this situation and came on him when he had to fight to come out of that. And uh, Without reading the whole thing, we don't have time, but um, he put forth this riddle based on that line that he killed when the anointing came. And uh, he told the Philistine guys that were around him, if they could guess the riddle, he'd give them new clothes. And um, if they couldn't guess it, they'd give him new clothes. Well, they pressured his bride-to-be, also a Philistine. They pressured, they threatened her that they would kill her and burn her house down and, and her folks. And, and so she pressured Samson. She pestered him and she nagged him and she pressured him. Why, why do I say this? Because you'll see this again later. And you'll see this again. Why? Because the enemy doesn't have any new tactics. He doesn't need any. The old ones are working all too well. But this is one of his tactics, pressure tactic. Oh, friends, when you see this, do not yield to it. When something, and it comes through people, it can come through people close to you. Just keep pressuring you and pushing you and pressuring you. This is the enemy trying to work through people. Don't yield to it. No matter how tired you get of it, don't yield to it. The Bible said don't give place to the enemy. But he did. He gave in because he got so tired of her just pleading with him and pestering him and pressuring him. And finally, he said, okay, okay, I'll tell you, you know, but don't tell anybody. Well, she went straight and told the guys, and it cost him a lot of money he was going to, but he just went and attacked the Philistines and got their clothes. Well, that caused other problems, as you might imagine. And so then when they came to get him, you know, there was a battle there, and that's when... Uh, uh, he killed a thousand men with the donkey's jawbone. But after all that, chapter 16, if you notice that, chapter 16, then Samson went to Gaza and he, what did he see? Huh? He saw another woman. <laughs> he saw a Philistine woman. He had issues with Philistine women. And, and you know, it's a problem uh, fighting Philistines in the daytime. And sleeping with them at night. It's a conflict. <laughs> they all are laughing. But does this apply to any of us today? Are there truths here? Are there things we, we must not compromise ourselves with or it'll hurt our faith? It will, you know, it doesn't mean God doesn't love us. It doesn't mean he won't forgive us. But it'll hurt our faith. And, and if we compromise our separation, it can affect what we're accomplishing 
or should be accomplishing with our call in this life. He saw this, this woman, and that's when, you know, they almost got him, but he had to rip the gate up out of the ground and carry it up the hill. And um, so we see multiple times that he's, uh, he's really got in trouble. He's almost lost his life. He's almost messed up everything because he saw a Philistine woman. And you would think, you know, after a couple of times you'd learn, but no. There was another one. And boy, this one would be uh, uh, even worse. Verse 4, it came to pass afterward, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now, the scripture doesn't specifically say that Delilah was a harlot, a prostitute. It doesn't say she wasn't. So she could have been. We do know this, she could be bought. She sold out for money. Money meant more to her than anything else. And this is something we, we need to keep in mind. Um, the, the Proverbs says in uh, 624, Proverbs 624, hold your place here, but just listen. The, the writer was telling his sons and his children to keep themselves from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. This is Proverbs 624. Lust not after her beauty in your heart, neither let her take you with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Now that, that phrase right there, the, uh, the W.E.B. says it like this. A prostitute reduces you to a piece of bread. And piece, uh, the piece of bread was payment for the services of the prostitute. So what he's saying is, you're nothing more to them than a piece of bread, than a paycheck, than a piece of money. And um, that's what Samson kept missing. I mean, this woman, this first one that he got involved with, she obviously didn't love him enough for him to trust her. She immediately uh, betrayed his trust and told his secrets to other people. And, and this woman that he got involved with, uh, secondly, uh, he couldn't trust her. And now Delilah, and we're going to see multiple times, it should have been so clear to him. You cannot trust this woman. You're nothing more to her than a paycheck. And yet, it, it, it didn't get through to him. It wasn't enough. And, and we shouldn't just assume that he's a stupid man. The Bible said concerning Solomon, who was one of the wisest men who've ever lived on the planet, that even him, the scripture said, was misled by ungodly women. In his old age, his wives, multiple, he married these ungodly women out of the foreign nations that served false gods and didn't serve God. He married them. And they turned his heart away from God and he built temples for all of their gods and really angered the Lord who had appeared to him multiple times and the Lord had specifically told him not to do this. Now Solomon's not stupid. He's not a dumb man. How can this be? Well, never underestimate the power of a woman over a man. And we see it happening the other way too, power of a man over a woman. But you and I should love God more than we love anybody, including ourselves, and including any other man or woman, any uh, family member. Any, if you don't have this settled in you, if the enemy can't deceive and trick you directly, he'll try to do it through somebody close to you. If he can't do it that way, he'll try to do it through someone close to them. Can you see how he works? He tries to work around it to deceive. So it doesn't just have to do with being dumb, although you can't say this is smart. What's going on? Just the power of the draw 
of the allure and ignoring things that should be obvious. So the Bible said he, he loved this woman, Delilah. Some translations say he was in love with her. But that doesn't mean she loved him. And nothing is said about her loving him or that, um, uh, you know, there was any reason that he had to trust her. You know the story that when the Philistine heads and chieftains uh, saw that he's involved with one of their people, Philistine woman, Delilah, they approached her and they offered her a big sum of money. There were at least five of these heads of towns and major towns in the Philistines, and I guess it was at least that many. They said, if you'll convince him to give you his secret to his power so that we can bind him and overcome him, each one of us will pay you 1,100 pieces of silver, each one of them. It was a big sum of money. And I reckon she didn't hesitate. She's in it for the money. And so she pressures him and pressures him And what's the source of your strength? What's the source of your strength? Now we know, if you want to answer the question, what's the source of his strength? We've been studying it for days now. The Spirit of the Lord, right? The Spirit of the Lord would come on him. That's the source of his strength. Well then what what else is there to talk about? Well, his separation. (laughs) His separation goes back all the way when he was born, right? What the Lord, the angel warned him and, and told him very strictly, do not ignore this. Do this. He never cut his hair. He doesn't eat anything of the vine. He doesn't drink any alcohol. He, he doesn't eat any kind of thing that the scripture says is unclean kind of food. When the Lord tells you something like that, you must not forget it. Ever. And you must not toy with it and play with it because there's so many reasons why you still don't even know. But the problem with hanging out with the ungodly is that they rub off on you. They influence you. Is Samson hanging around the ungodly? He's fellowshipping intimately with the ungodly that don't respect the things of God. And so he got looser and looser with the secret. He got looser and looser with the secret of his separation. And finally, you know the story, he told her. Somebody said, why would he tell her? I don't think he believed, even if his hair was cut, that he would lose his power. Because When they cut his hair off and they set the Philistines on you, the Bible said he jumped up, he shook himself, expecting like other times. See, I don't think he really thought it would leave him. But the Bible said the Lord had departed from him. And the Philistines grabbed him, gouged his eyes out, put him in shackles. See, the enemy is just looking for a way to get to you. And, And we must not belittle what has sanctified us. Now, diet hasn't sanctified us and our hair hadn't sanctified us. The blood of the Lamb has sanctified us. Come on, can you see that? And we dare not do despite to the Spirit of grace and speak lightly of the blood. The Bible warned about blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. There are some things we just don't joke about. And there are things we don't make light of and we don't trivialize. That blood has bought us, has paid for us, has sanctified us. Can you say amen? Amen. We don't toy with and trivialize that which has separated us, sanctified us, bought us, redeemed us, cleansed us. He did and it cost him everything. He, he, He ignored the words of the angel, which were the words of God. He compromised his uh, separation and sanctification and it left him. The anointing left him. Oh, but there's a verse I like (laughs) toward the end of this. It says, but his hair began to grow again. Oh, don't you like that? His hair began to grow again. And while they were mocking him and making sport of him, 
his hair had begun to grow and he can't see, but he gets out there in the stadium where they're mocking him. And he says, put my hands against these columns. And he cried out to God, Lord, Lord let it come on me one more time. <laughs> Does he have faith in the power? Let it come on me one more time. And man, the anointing came on him and he pushed the support pillars out from under the stadium and the Colosseum collapsed and, and the leaders and thousands of Philistines died in that collapse more than he had overcome in his previous lifetime, the Bible said. Even in his failure, God is merciful and has heard his prayer and let this anointing come on him again. These stories are enlightening, aren't they? There is so much for us today if we will receive them. Is it important that we maintain our separation from the world and we don't get contaminated with the blasphemies and the disrespect of the world and that we hold precious the blood and the faith and the word? Can you say amen? amen. And that's our time is again up for today. Say it out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome this world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. I've enjoyed being with you in Faith School again this week. Uh, there's a lot of material that we've already covered in previous weeks. If you haven't seen it yet, let me encourage you, go back to the beginning and get caught up with us because this is building one upon another. Let me read this scripture to you from Matthew. It says, Jesus said, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He went on to say, Whoever gives a drink of, uh, to one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in my name, he will not in no wise lose his reward. I want to thank all the partners for helping us uh, if you enable us to reach people with this, you will receive part of this reward. One translation said, receive the same reward as the prophet. Well, we wouldn't be able to do these things without all the people that help us in prayer and faith and, and money resources. And so uh, it's only right that if it, we couldn't do it without them, they get, and you get part of that same reward. So uh, I rejoice that everything that's happening, every partner will have a part of the reward now and in time to come. If you're not a partner yet and you want to be, there's some information on your screen. You can get involved that way today. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you again for your partnership. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.